let's take a trip to a strange and alien world, one that would be deadly to us. But this isn't some weird exoplanet. This is Earth, just Earth 2.4 billion years ago. Ready to find out more? At this point in the video I'd usually ask people to subscribe, but this time I wanted to thank everyone who has subscribed. It makes me really happy to know that there are people out there who enjoy watching my videos. You're all very lovely, so to my subscribers I want to say a big thank you. Let's get into our time and space machine, fire up the Eye of Harmony and get that time rotor working. From our viewpoint high above our home planet, the first thing that we notice is how unhomelike it is. None of the continents that we're familiar with today exist. A hundred million years earlier, changes to the Earth's crust had led to the formation of one of the first supercontinents called Kenorland. But now, a hundred million years later, this is starting to break up into smaller islands. If we were to take a trip to Mars at our current time, then we'd still have missed the oceans by about a billion years. If we went to Venus, however, we may see huge oceans and maybe even life. For now, however, let's choose one of these smaller islands and land there to see what the planet's like close up. The first thing that we'd notice as we looked out over the landscape is the absence of life. Any life on land. No animals, no plants, nothing. In fact, we may have noticed from orbit the lack of green over the Earth. But it isn't until we finally land that we see what this really means. Nothing but bare earth as far as the eye can see. If we want to find life, we'll have to find some water, but more about that later. If we want to leave the safety of our space time ship, then we're going to need some sort of spacesuit. The atmosphere of the Earth 2.4 billion years ago would be deadly. It was thought that because the sun was 20% dimmer, that a thicker atmosphere would be needed to produce a greenhouse effect to keep the planet warm. More recent studies looking at fossilised raindrops suggest that the atmosphere was about half as thick as it is today. Even more recent studies of air bubbles trapped in ancient volcanic lava suggest that the atmosphere may have been even thinner than that. Regardless of how thick the atmosphere is, we'd still be unable to breathe outside of our time space machine without a spacesuit. The atmosphere of the Earth 2.4 billion years ago is a nasty mix of toxic chemicals. These included lethal levels of carbon dioxide and methane. Looking out over the horizon, a methane haze hangs in the air. We won't see a blue sky on this planet for a few hundred million years. If we walk around we'll see just how barren the Earth looks, how sterile it seems. But the Earth isn't as lifeless as it may first appear. To find any life, however, we're going to have to go into the water. But we're wearing a spacesuit, so that won't be a problem. Even underwater, the sea still looks sterile. There are no fish, no coral. In fact, we'll have to wait about half a billion years for even the first eukaryotic cells to evolve. And we've got nearly 2 billion years to wait for the first multicellular eukaryotic organisms to appear. To see any life here we're going to need a powerful microscope. But there is life. The oceans are teeming with microscopic bacterial life. One group of these microscopic organisms are particularly important. These are the cyanobacteria. And these can photosynthesize. This means that they can make food from nothing more complex than carbon dioxide and water, using the light of the sun as a power source. One byproduct of this process is oxygen. But there's a reason we came back to 2.4 billion years ago. The oxygen produced by the cyanobacteria has now started to be released into the atmosphere. This is actually called the Great Oxidation Event. With our scientific equipment we might be able to detect the first whiffs of oxygen in this ancient atmosphere. This will, however, have a couple of unintended consequences. Firstly, to many of the organisms that live without oxygen, the presence of oxygen is toxic. Oxygen is very reactive and can react to form substances within cells that can kill them. The Great Oxidation Event was responsible for the first mass extinction, killing up to 99% of all life on Earth. 
So why weren't the cyanobacteria killed by the oxygen they themselves were producing? Well, modern cyanobacteria get around this problem by forming a relationship with bacteria that produce an enzyme called catalase. This enzyme detoxifies oxygen. It could be that this relationship goes all the way back to the great oxidation event. If we were to stick around for a couple of hundred million years, we'd see the effect of the other consequence of the great oxidation event. The methane in the atmosphere starts to react with the oxygen, and this produces carbon dioxide and water. The removal of the methane would eventually lead to the first blue skies over the Earth. Unfortunately, even though carbon dioxide and methane are both greenhouse gases, methane is about 30 times more effective as a greenhouse gas. The loss of methane from the atmosphere will lead to a mass glaciation event known as the Huronian Ice Age and effectively turning the Earth into a ball of ice. This would further add to the problems early life had to deal with and would also further exacerbate the Great Extinction. If we were to stay on Earth for any length of time, we'd notice that the days are considerably shorter than we are used to. The day length 2.4 billion years ago was roughly 18 hours, and to look for the reason for this we need to look to the sky. The Moon is closer to the Earth than it is now, about 50,000 kilometres closer than it is today. This won't make the Moon look huge in the sky, for that to happen we'd have to go back much further but it will make the Moon look about 20% bigger than it does today. As the Moon orbits the Earth, it exerts a gravitational pull on the oceans. This creates a bit of friction between the oceans and the Earth's crust, and this friction causes the Earth to slow down ever so slightly. 2.4 billion years ago, a year would have contained almost 487 days. As much as this is an interesting place to visit, I think it's wise that we end our stay here and climb back aboard our space-time machine for the journey through space-time back to a world which is more familiar to us. And until next time we hop on that learning curve for a journey into outer space, inner space or time, thank you for watching.